Hey everybody, welcome back to One Tree Homestead. So today, we're gonna do a little bit of milling and I wanted to go over with you the mill we've been using to build this barn. Uh, so we purchased this mill a few months ago. It's the Woodland Mills HM122 model. I have the nine and a half horsepower upgrade on it and we got a track and I got a track extension for it so it'll mill up to 16 foot lumber. Now with the barn here, we've only ever milled up to 12 feet. so. The 16 foot will come in handy at some point in time, I'm sure, but having the extra track length gives me a little bit of uh, leeway when I'm setting this log in. And you can see I've got room on the end of the log here. As far as cutting goes, this mill has actually surprised me. I kind of figured it would be one of those things where it's slow and repetitive and it just kind of gets old, but it actually does a really good job with moving through most of these logs. Now this log right here is a smaller diameter log and it's only pushing about 10 and a half inches in diameter on that small end, but we can still mill it for two by sixes and this, this mill does a really good job with these size logs. Now I have milled up to 26 inch uh, logs on this mill and it, it does take it. Now the motor and the blade, it'll take a while to get through a 26 inch log and of course you're gonna have to square that off. I think the maximum cut length on this thing is 22 inches. So by the time you get it all squared down, it does it does still get through there. It can take up to 26 inches. But for the price, you know, I'm just in under $3,000 on this mill. And considering what it can do and the fact that we're into this barn to where I've got maybe six more hours of milling to do. And I've only got 17 and a half hours on this thing. I've been very happy with it. And, you know, I've thought about getting the mill for oh, as long as I can remember and I wish I would have done it years ago honestly I mean I wish I'd have bought a mill 10 years ago because this just makes so much more sense and the fact that we've been able to pull this kind of value out of timber that's just been thrown away I I'm loving this thing so we're gonna go ahead and I'll show you how this thing works how well it runs I won't bore you to death by making you watch all the cuts but I'll give you an idea about how how I roll through these logs. Um, we'll go ahead and mill up a couple here. I'm gonna try to make some two by six for skirting boards. And I got a couple two by six over here that I gotta put on for the gable in rafters. And hopefully, though, I need some two by sixes for some bracing that goes in the middle of the barn. And hopefully, I have enough logs here to be able to get all the material I need. So we're gonna go ahead and roll into this.
All right. So, we got that one done. Those are the last two 12-footers we have in the yard that are any good. So, hopefully, I think we need, we got four 2x4s off that first one. And hopefully we can get five off of this one. That'll give us nine. And I think we can get three out of this fella in the bucket. And that'll give us 12. And I need a total of... I need a total of 13. <laughs> so we're going to have to hope maybe we can get an extra one here. So let's see what happens.
All right, so that's going to wrap up our saw one for the day. Um, we'll see what we ended up with here. I think we had, let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We ended up with 14 2 by 6 12s. We ended up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 2 by 6 by 10s and 2 2 by 10 by 10s. The 2 by 10 by 10s will be the headers right here on the end over top of the sliding doors. And then everything else is skirting and um, it's going to go where the double header will go up on top of the post to be able to brace the, the rafters in. And that's the next step on this barn is getting these in so that I can brace those rafters so I can finish off that top area. But yeah, that little mill does a really good job. And I've... I, uh, so I listen to a lot of different people talk about, you know, you need this size mill, you need that size mill to be able to do something. And I can tell you that that's the smallest mill on the market. It's the cheapest mill I've been able to find, and it does a wonderful job. Well, I mean, to this point right now, it's already paid for itself as far as I'm concerned. You consider what we did today. That was four logs that we popped out there, and we finished just shy of 300 board feet off of that mill. The, well, then the off that mill. Now we put two and a half hours on the mill. So technically according to the mill, it's running a little over hundred board feet per hour. Um, actual time to do all this. Of course I'm filming as I go, but I had five total hours. We started this morning at 10 o'clock. It's three o'clock in the afternoon right now. So, you know, we had five hours to get this in, but you got to consider that was me sawing logs, moving stuff around, you know, trying to change batteries out on the camera, all the stuff along those lines. So, you know, I really think that, that the HM122 from Woodland Mills is probably the best starter mill that you could go with. Considering that it's going to have sawed all the lumber for this entire building, I've been very happy with it. And I think right where we're at now, I would guess that we're going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 hours total on that mill to do this building. So, you know, even if I wanted to resell it, I still have a substantial amount of equity in that mill even after building a building like this. So if any of you out there are looking to actually think about doing something like this, I would 100% from my experience suggest it. I mean, it's been, it's, been a ch it's been a game changer for us. So that should be the last of the larger dimensional lumber I have to mill. I think that we're clear on everything. Now, the only thing we have left is we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to mill some shorter stuff, some six and a half foot because we're going to have to put up the rafters here in the middle and that's the last thing we have to do once I get these double headers in right here and I get those rafters braced in place. Um, of course I have to do the same thing at the bottom down here and that'll be done here over this next week. But overall she's coming together you know we did a lot of work this week on getting the rest of these rafters up and in place and even working on some bracing. I, I, I wanted to see just how I wanted to brace all this out. And so I created a little bit of a, so I created a little bit of a pocket system here. And you can see how I've braced these posts out and how I've got the two by 12s positioned in place. And I think this will hold pretty well. So yeah, I'd, I'd say overall, this building's coming together. Um, hopefully two weeks and I'll have the frame completed. Of course I still have to mill all the 2x4s for the purlins but I think that's just about it. So mainly just the 2x4s for the purlins is what I have left to mill. And then um, we'll have to mill the siding. Of course that's going to be all poplar and that's going to take me a, a, a good week just to mill all of that and get it up. So we're looking at three weeks before I can probably work on the, the metal on the barn. So hopefully mid-October this thing will be done so so thanks for tuning in and as always I hope you all have a wonderful day